Today we're going to talk about what's in my little red book of reselling. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about your little red book, your little black book, a list of those people that you call when you need something specific related in your business. Now, there's a vintage 1960s song by the group Love called In My Little Red Book. And it's a list of all the people that he called in that song. That's kind of like the same type of thing that I have for reselling specifically. Uh, back in the day, they used to say, I have a guy for that. If you need somebody to fix this or you got something wrong with your car, I got a guy for that. I got a guy that does this. I got a guy that does that or a girl that does this or a girl that does that. A lot of the times when I'm out in the real world and I run into somebody who does something that could potentially help my business, obviously I want to inquire, investigate it a little more, reach out, talk to the people and see if there's something they can do for me. We basically have a list of a ton of businesses and individuals that supply us with stuff. So if I need boxes, I've got several people I can call. I do have a guy for that or a girl for that. And I can basically just email or drop a line to somebody and say, hey, can you get me a skid of boxes? What size you need and off I go. Or I need some tape or I need the paper. Or with the model making or something, I need some latex rubber to make some molds. I know exactly who to call to give me the best information as well as the best price. That's something you need to know. And that comes in play with keeping a good contact with people, not burning your bridges. With the business side of this, I'm always looking to see what I can do or what I can gain from a business relationship with some other person or business. So that's why I do have a list. Most of the things that I get or purchase or show out in videos are stuff that I've gotten from somebody specific. Like a good friend of our channel, Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter here. He's got a guy for comics. He's got a guy for this. I have the same basic principle, and I keep a list, a book of everything that I deal with, every one I contact or need something from. So if we need something out of the ordinary, a cord, something related to a microphone, or I need some more technical expertise from somebody who's done something longer than me, I know who to call. I'm in people's lists as well where people do contact me for many different things, and that's a good place. Plus, so if you help somebody else, you know, you can hopefully get some help back from them as well. So whether it's merchandise, sourcing out specifics or not, that is a huge plus. You want to build up a relationship with any type of business that would do something that could benefit your business. Regardless of any personal or feelings like that, this is a business and you go after business contacts in that same philosophy. If I didn't have a list for some of these things, I'd be dead in the water on some items like pricing or images of something or markets to get things or even markets to sell things at as well. Most of what we sell, I have a person for that. I have a person that supplies me with toys generally, whether it be through an auction, whether it be through a picker or whether it be through specific individuals or places that I always get the same type of items. I literally can flip through a book and decide on what I want. If I want to buy big bundles of books or even a pallet or two of books, I can do that as well. If I wanted clothing by the pallet, those are available as well. So are returns from Amazon or anywhere else if you really wanted that. The list that I have includes things like some of the mass quantity sites, wholesalers 100% as well categorized by what I would be looking for. So if I'm looking for Christmas, I've got a whole list of people that supply us on a routine basis for Christmas items. If one item's hot one year and it's not hot the next year, I have a list of alternate sources for all of those. Don't just have one source or one location for any specific item. The more you can have, the better you are off. Like when we first started getting heavy into postcards, I only knew a couple people that were hopefully able to get me postcards on a semi-routine basis. Nowadays, if I want postcards, I can get them any day of the week just with a simple call or email to somebody. It's literally that simple to this point. But again, it's taken me years to have a guy for that or a girl for that to get that stuff for our business. That's the big difference between those who are just getting on and someone at my stage. Again, it's not just me. A lot of people are like this. They'll know exactly who to call, where to go to get specifics. If I run out on something, 
I know where to get it, whether it's supplies, whether it's merchandise or whatever the case may be. Like I talk about end cuts, which are bubble wrap sections, the end of a roll of bubble cut that can't be used for anything else. A lot of the manufacturers and companies that do that as a business that make bubble wrap supplies or baggies or mailers or things like that sell the leftover rolls because they can't do anything else with them. They sell very cheaply because in many cases they may not be uniform. I have three people these days that can supply me with those. It's the cheapest stuff you can get out there. You can get a thousand foot roll of this stuff for like 15 bucks. You pick it up local. You have nothing in it but a few minutes in drive depending on where the these companies are compared to you and I've got one really really close to where I live so that's one of those I've got a guy or a girl for this situations I know where to go if this person's out I can call the second one on my list or the third one on my list if need be but having that list is essential to your business knowing specifics or knowing who to ask on something very specific because it's it's their special niche it is key to running a business successfully or if you can swap out things, it's a good plus as well. A good example of this is somebody we know gets massive merchandise in all the time. And he sets certain things aside for me. Now, I do the same thing. I get massive quantities of merchandise in as well. And I set certain things aside for him. Now, as a general rule, when I get something in that he may want, I don't usually mess with it at all. I'll just turn it on to the next person down the line. It's tools in this example here. I don't usually mess with many tools just because I can't usually get them on any routine basis. There's always somebody else who has beat me to the punch for pickers and all the other aspects of it. Tools are a very highly competitive business where I'm at locally. So it's almost impossible unless I want to spend the night somewhere at an estate sale trying to be the very first one in the door and only go straight for the tools so I don't usually mess with that so I save all those when I do run into them for somebody else and he saves me all the vintage paper that he just doesn't care about many times I get items from him that are worth a lot of money and of course he gets tools for me that are worth a lot of money so I've got a guy that gets me bulk lots of paper and in many times it's the same type of items a label a specific type of flyer brochure photos RPPCs or anything like that I get from certain specific people it's just a matter of a phone call a text message or an email to figure out if he's got new stuff in for me he'll build it up until it's ready and say hey I've got a couple big boxes for you that's the way this works for us I have a little red book of exclusive reseller only contacts that I deal with and it's worked for us very well because we've built up a rapport with these folks so our prices are better the honesty between us is awesome it's hard to trust somebody when you're first starting it but once you've done successful business and both parties are mutually making something decent out of that relationship it really expands from there and you can work out better deals better connections they'll turn you on to people as well you'll get a guy to find this for you or a girl to find that for you Whatever the case may be, don't burn your bridges. Always keep an open mind no matter who you were talking about. You never know what they may do in the future or what they're doing now that could help your business. Hopefully, they're being business thought-wise as well, and they are thinking the exact same thing you are. Many times, just by me asking a ton of questions to people, I've learned or met new contacts that now supply me with things. Contacts that I would have never, ever found had I not stepped out of the bounds, asked some questions, asked some relevant information and things like that. Maybe they themselves weren't able to supply me with certain things, but friends or people they knew specifically were. So don't just think of the direct contacts contacts but indirect contacts have worked awesome for us also good example hey I'm gonna be over on your side of the town Do you have anything for me boom there you go Or I'm gonna be over on Friday any chance you're gonna have anything by Friday another great example that's the type of thing and feelers that I throw out there most of the time I get responses yeah swing on by and boom I'm out I hit a whole bunch of people on the same day I can orchestrate this ahead of time say Sunday I want to do something next week I'll set these feelers out I'll send some contacts out emails text messages phone calls to a whole bunch of people in that area and have it all lined up so there's always a good reason to have a little red book of numbers names and contacts like that all very specific categorized by what they can supply or what their business relations is 
So I keep that separate. I keep that totally different than my personal contacts, my family contacts as well too. Having a person for something is a key plus. Most successful businesses, most people that have been doing this long time, including most of the long time YouTubers who talk about reselling, probably have a guy, a girl, a person for everything that they deal in at these days and always looking for more also. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. This man had a profitable day. It's good merchandising to display as few articles on the counter as possible. A booster would hesitate to take a loan item since it would immediately be missed and draw attention to his presence. On a rainy day, this shoplifter simply palms the tag and walks out of the store. Stealing larger items requires more self-possession. It is estimated that one of every 60 customers to enter your store tomorrow will try to steal something.